in the lab. Today we have a BMW uh, X3, I believe it is. X3. It's a quarter and rear bumper. The rear bumper is a two-tone. Bottom color is a solid black. Up above it is a metallic black. I'm getting ready to spray it here, and I noticed that my prepper left a few areas that were still shiny. So I caught that, gave it a little scuff. You know, I know most of you guys probably are prepping your own cars that you paint. By any chance, if you do have a prepper, or even if you are prepping them yourself, always go over and double check all those edges. So anywhere you see any kind of shine, paint will not stick to it. So just make sure you check all those little cracks, corners, you know, edges, get everything. Everywhere you want paint to stick, sand it, scuff it. And don't think just spraying some adhesion promoter over it will save you because it will peel. see a couple coats of straight black so I'm actually gonna base and clear this and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of it the following day just I had so many different things going on I got one inside the paint booth right now and um, so just to keep things rolling you know speed things up so while I got base drying on one in the booth i'm coming out right now in the shop i'm just doing this lower portion of the bumper just so i can keep things in motion normally i do them both in the booth i take it in the booth do the bottom mask it off do the top you know, clear everything together but again sometimes you just got to keep the flow moving mixing this clear four to one the speed clear we have 10 15 minutes the body man smoking his cigarette you see the sign on the door flammable stay away and he's smoking a cigarette all oh, you damn body man cut it out I know y'all out there doing it smoking them stink ass cigarettes and clear through my Iwata LPH 400 1.4 tip yeah, it's pretty pretty much my go-to gun for all around stuff you know I run my base through it clear through it yeah, you can use it for either so if you guys out there want to get a gun spray gun that you can do your base and your clear through the Iwata LPH is a pretty good gun for that DV1 in the booth right now while I'm spraying so you know, I would use that normally for my base but you know, this one works fine so now we're going to take it to the booth and start on the rest of the car so there's a few things I have to get ready for the way I prep my blends with a couple rags, roll of the two inch tape, water, and scuff stuff, and a little piece of paper. So, let me show you the way my prepper sets it up, and you know, he thinks that this is ready, which it's not. And you can never do a blend like that and think that you're gonna get away with it. So, I'm gonna show you the way I do it. But let me know if you guys out there do it a little different. But this method, you won't need any sandpaper at all once you're ready. You know, once it's finished and you've done your blend, 
I know some guys go over it with a little 3,000, 2,000. If you do it this way, you won't need any sandpaper to burn that blend in. You'll see at the end of the video when I do it, what I'm saying. So I take my scuff stuff, put on the rag with some water, and give, it a, give it a good scuff. You can put a little elbow grease in it. This is gonna give you a little little etch for your blending agent. And it also cleans at the same time. So it's cleaning that area good. So use a little scuff stuff. Pull your rag over. I'm just trying to clean it off now. And again, that's cleaning that panel as well as prepping it for good adhesion. So use a little more water. back pocket dry it off real good now that's prep for a perfect blend you see in the end perfect there were some little spots I saw there so I'm gonna take some 1000 just scuff those little marks off this really isn't part of what I do when I do my blends but um again I saw some little some little white spots that were on there so I just took them off real quick nothing big okay and then this is what I'd start I start with this here put my two inch tape tape and seal that off completely I don't want no kind of loose vapor spray getting under there getting on the rest of the car so that's that's masked off completely Take it, fold it over, roll it off my leg. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. If it didn't work, start over. And you want to get about a foot of, or a foot or two of this here tape. <clears throat> and this is what we're going to do. We start from right where you sealed it off, put the sticky part right over there. And then you're going to build it up, you know, layer the sticky part of the tape that's not folded right over the last piece of the piece of tape that's down before it. And you're going to put a couple pieces there and you want to line it up and kind of make like a little tunnel under there. Again, some may think this is a little OD. But this is just a foolproof way, no mess ups. And I don't do this all the time, sometimes I'm rushing, you know, but um, when I got a nice one, you know, it's a brand new BMW. So I just wanna make sure this sucker comes out good. And I leave a piece of that tape there, or you can pull this back and open it up if you need to. And make that like a little tunnel. And at times, I would make that my actual blend area but now I'm going over it twice I'm just doubling up on it so now I'm going to go over with a piece of paper extend it over a little <clears throat> and this is what I do here to give that edge of that paper a little stiffness so that when you're clearing it doesn't just blow and flatten the paper around and I back tape that under fold it over and that'll give that edge a little stiffness to it that way when you're clearing that air pressure doesn't have the paper flipping down touching the wet part of the clear there so again you want to keep it like a little tunnel open tunnel I put a little tape right across it again so that's uh, access you know don't really tape it down hard leave it the way you can get it off if you need to fold it back and blend a little further if you need to Okay, get ready to start basing. Get my spray out card. I didn't really have time to you know, check my color ahead of time like I normally do. You, know, you saw earlier, I actually had to paint the bottom of the bumper outside in the shop because I had other things in the booth I was painting. So, you know, 
sometimes time just catches up with you and you gotta make it happen. So, doing my spray out card now. Here I find another spot where the prepper actually left unsanded primer. And, uh, yeah, a few spots he left. Right here under that little marker light. You see it's all shiny right there. And um, yeah, paint will not stick to that. It will not stick. That paint will flake off and it'll come back. So then under here wasn't masked up properly. So these are things I gotta fix. I know most of you guys out there prep your own stuff, so you know these things you probably won't have to worry about. But if you have a prepper, you know, that does your stuff, man, you just gotta you gotta check it. You can't just walk in there and start spraying. So it's better off to take a couple minutes, take care of those few issues. Don't be lazy and let it go. And it may fly, it may go, you know. Then again, it may come back. So just take the time and take care of it. Nothing worse than the car you to paint it. A few days later, a week later, you're sitting there working and you see that car pull back up the front. Customer mean mugging. You're like, oh shoot. What happened? You know, so take your time, get it right. Say, measure, measure twice, cut once, you know. Gotta have patience with this here. So we'll get started with my base. I actually like to feel my panels before I paint. I put my hand on every panel before I paint. Feel if there's any kind of rough overspray, some primer, some mist, some dirt, some anything. You know. Okay, starting with my base. Notice I'm gonna spray everything below that body line. I'm not gonna go up above that body line except on that quarter panel. And you'll see. You'll see in a sec, you'll see in a minute how this plays out. Nothing above that line. My, most of my coverage in my first coat, so. There's two areas on this bumper you don't want to put any paint on. See this part right here I'm touching? You don't want any paint right there. Same thing on this side, that same spot right below the tail light. When you're doing these bumpers right here, you don't want any paint up there. Because when that tailgate comes down, that tailgate is going to match right to the side of that bumper. Those two areas, keep your paint away from that. No, no paint, no base. No. Keep it below that. Okay, I'm gonna check my color. This here stimulates gloss. So this is instead of putting actual clear coat down or spraying prep saw grease and wax over your spray out. You know, they got this stuff here in the can you can spray stays wet for a good time, a good amount of time. See, this color was off. The color was completely off. Again, if I would have done this, you know, ahead of time outside, it would have been smooth sailing in here, but this is how it goes. So, being that the vehicle's in the booth, 
and I can't really see it in the sunlight I take the gas cap off and I take that out in the sun and I do my spray out and compare my spray out to it you know out in the sunlight handheld flashlight sunlight you know that only gives you, you know, so much you need to really take it out in actual sun and match it see here, night and day that'll never fly Ray Charles wouldn't take that one so went back in the lab there was actually another variant to this paint code A90 I believe was the code I didn't have to do a whole lot of tinting. I went up and mixed another three ounces of this particular variant. This was less blue, a little darker, and it actually matched up pretty good. So that's what I wind up going with. sunlight a little flashlight sunlight on the other side in the other building so I had to use my cell phone to check this out which did not work did not work one bit And normally, when you're painting the rear of the vehicle or whatever part of the vehicle you're painting, you really don't want to try to match it up to the front. Like I'm painting the rear bumper, and here I am matching it up to the front. Most times you don't want to do that because the car could have been painted sometime before and something might be off and you're matching, you're trying to match up to say this hood, this front hood could have been painted before. So I'm matching my paint for the rear up to this hood in the front that's been repainted. But being I know this car was brand new, um, that's why it hasn't been painted. I know it hasn't been painted, and it worked out. Usually always match your color up with the panel that it's going to be up against. You paint the rear bumper, match it up against that quarter. Not the fender, not the hood, nothing else. That way you're just being safe. that bottom color was that far off remember when I had that panel out in the sun it was that far off still went up to that body line now I noticed a few scratches on that quarter panel so I went out and got the prepper hey, and what brought them in and what asked them what grit them shits is cause I got like four coats of paint on there that shit ain't coming out I don't know what grit you used that was did I do that? well I did 320 everything. But then you went back with a DA or no? Mm, I believe so, bro. And I can hit it real quick with a sponge and like 400. But you didn't go no coarser than 320 though. Hmm? You didn't go no coarser than 320. Yeah, nothing more coarse than that. No. I try, I try some shit. I try to hit it with like some thousand or something. You want me to do a real quick and just wipe it? Nah, I, I just want to make no sure. No 220 or 180 or nothing. No. Nah, I use some shit. I got some 800 in here. Yeah, we primed it over there. Stinky didn't do it. Yeah. All right, I get it. Yeah. Take my 800, I have to scuff down this whole panel. I mean, the panel has scratches from beginning to end. And the whole length of that primer 
it's all scratched. It looked like 180 grit. I don't know what it was, but um, yeah, it was messed up. So I picked my 800, and I used a little prep saw, grease and wax remover, to sand it with, only because I don't want to start creating dust. Once you get all that dust going in there on this one, this dark color, you know, it'll, it'll be dust and dirt up the paint job. So I use a little grease and wax with some 800, and scuff that down. Again, with the first color being so off, not matching at all, and then all these scratches and all this sanding I'm doing, and then come back with the correct color, still nothing going above that body line. I'm right on that body line, and just watch how, in the end, watch how smooth it just comes out, and it just, it's perfect, you know what I mean? Well, it's not perfect, but you know what I mean. It's damn good. Learning to use those body lines and work off of those body lines on cars. That'll save you a lot of time, a lot of material. And then in return, make you a lot of money. You know, if you're on a flat rate commission, you know. Just learn how to work and paint off of those body lines. Again, I see that the camera isn't really angled properly. You know, it's a little lower. Again, I'm just trying out this head mount thing and, you know, trying to still get everything on the right track. You know, still new. And I'm learning. So I apologize if it looks a little off. It looks weird to me sitting looking at it, you know, as I'm talking about it. So I know somebody else got to feel it. So it'll get better. area right below that tail light. You don't want no base on that. You see how I'm staying right below that. And again, still kind of working off of a body line. There's a body line right up under that panel that I'm telling you not to put your paint on. And I'm staying right on that line. Quick tack. See, I'm using the clean side of this tack rag. Much, not much, you know, overspray on that. That's pretty clean. That's what you want to see. Nothing rough. You don't want all that rough stuff coming off all on your tack rag. You know, once that starts building up, all that dry sand piling, you know, that creates a whole different set of issues. And having your right base reducer, that's what'll help eliminate a lot of that. Always play with those different base reducers. I am working off of that line. Nothing up on that on that panel right up there. Stay right below that. Okay, getting ready to clear it. Find a little tack. As you see, not much up above that body line. Only thing up there is a little bit of overspray that fell up. But rag full of all kind of color. Forgot to tape up my hole that I cut from my gas cap. I was spray getting in there, so take care of this now. clear pro spray clear that we use no reducer just straight two to one putting it through the dv1 spray gun 1.4 tip and c2 cap
I really wasn't feeling this gun at first, but um, on smaller jobs, you know, it does a great job. It does a real good job. You know, it lays down flat, there's no doubt about that. It's just a little, little, little slower than I care to use, but it does do the job. Amazing. Amazing gun. But on a big job, I'd never do it. For something small like this, Real good. that 10 minutes flash and now what you want to do see when I went on my first coat I started here I'm not gonna do that on this last coat so I'm gonna blend over there so I'm gonna start on the opposite side so work my way around so by the time I get over to that side so by the time I get to the other side and I spray that last stroke of clear next to where I'm gonna blend that clear will still be fresh and still wet so when I go and I get my blending agent and do my blend, you know, it'll all melt in. If I would have started over on that other side first, up at the top, then by the time I come around the bumper, come over here, and then go back over there to blend, that's already gonna be drying. And sometimes that blend won't melt in the way it should. So, let's see what I mean in a second. Working my way back up to that blend area. That blend area is going to be the freshest clear. The wettest is going to be right there. So I'll take my clear up, take my clear up. Right to that last spot where I've risen when I came in with a prepper sanded till. That's where I spray my clear. My last drop of clear goes right there. And what I do, come over. Pour out whatever clear I have. Dump that. Still leave a little bit in, in, the, in the cup there. A little bit of clear left in there. Then you go ahead. Pour your clear blending. Clear blender. Whatever you use. I mean, they're all pretty much the same. Every company got different brands so forth so when you swish that around you swish that around let that little bit of clear that was already in there mix up with the new blending agent that you put in there and I drop the pressure drop the pressure way down I, I believe it was like a 8 psi somewhere around there and um 
turn in your fluid a little. You don't want to hose it on there. I just want to mist it. You want to mist that blend in there. Just mist it in there. Let it melt in. even a little more and barely squeezing the trigger I have good trigger control barely squeeze it <clears throat> pull that back and come a little more a little more and just look at it you know, look to see where it, where it needs a little more just melt it in okay then you want to get your buffer and your polish actually compound you know, a light a light compound nothing too heavy Again, I didn't sand this at all since yesterday. I tried. I came back the next morning. This is all I did. Take a good look at it. Everywhere you put your blending agent, a little blending solvent, you want to go ahead and um, put a little compound on that. take your time and you want to go over it pretty slow you don't want to burn it but you want to go pretty slow you want that to heat up you want that pound to get hot that's the whole idea here the heat that this buffer is making that's what's melting that right on in that's making that disappear if you look at it you still see a little area where you can see the blend like kind of hazy put a little more compound and run that buffer over it and just let it sit there a couple seconds on that area that panel gets hot, that's what melts that right in, and it'll be flawless. I mean flawless. No kind of rough marks or I've seen some blends where people sand it and they buff it with too aggressive compound and it starts to eat away and it just looks real funny. I mean this this is flawless. You know. I rarely say flawless or perfect. I rarely say that with this stuff because nothing is flawless and perfect. But this is this is this is flawless this blend this blending method is flawless try it and let me know or if you already do it let me know or if you do something else let me know let me know how that works for you how do you do your blends you know and right there i mean that's like a smooth and i'll show you again once i get it out in the sun once it's around front you know, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looked like outside. Look pretty good. Everything matched up. See that body line? See the blend area? I mean, flawless. Flawless. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Boy Trigger Man, out. Please like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, and his girlfriend. Mouth.